Today we're going to talk about inductance calculations for bundled conductors. I'm going to introduce this concept to you and uh, this I assure you will be the last in our series of discussions on inductance of a conductor. Uh, so we will do the concept today, uh, we'll do a quick example in the next video and uh, then we'll move on to capacitance uh, of a conductor. So a quick recap here of everything we've seen so far uh, with reference to inductance. Uh, we started off with uh, defining or rather formulating the inductance of a solid conductor just by itself um, and we got this equation 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 L of D over R prime where R prime was uh, 0.7788 times R Com and this we saw was compensating for the um, uh, inductance due to internal flux. Uh, the formulations for induction that we saw after that all followed the similar pattern. You had this constant of 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 and then you had ln and then you had a greater distance on the numerator and the smaller distance on the denominator. Uh, so after the solid uh, conductor, we moved on to stranded conductors uh, where we introduced two conductors, um, one taking the current in one direction and the other uh, bring the current back in the other direction to form a complete circuit. Uh, and we introduced concepts of GMD and GMR and these were the formulas for GMD and GMR where GMD was basically a product of all the distances between all the strands in, in one conductor, let's say conductor X, and another conductor Y. And GMR was the distance between the strands within the same conductor. We then moved on to three-phase systems and we saw uh, the equation for a, a configuration of an equilateral triangle where all the three phases were in, in an equilateral triangle configuration. And this is the formulation we got for that. We substituted this R prime with the constant dS. Um, we also moved, then we saw a, a configuration uh, where the three phase uh, lines were in an unsymmetrical configuration. And we spoke about transposition. We got a very similar formula once again, where we um, substituted D for D equivalent, where D equivalent was nothing but the distance between the three uh, phases. So this was basically a generalized formula of this equation. Uh, if it is, if the three phases are symmetrically spaced, D12, D21, D31 will become all the same D uh, cube uh, to the root of uh, three would give us nothing but this formulation. So uh, now here what we've seen is we've generalized the numerator. How about the denominator though? Do we have a concept similar to stranded conductors like we saw in single phase in a three phase system? And that is where bundled conductors come into play. Before I go into that concept though, if you see this equation, what we notice is that L, the inductance, is inversely proportional to this dS, the internal distance in the conductor, right? So if we want to reduce what that implies is if we want to reduce the inductance, we have to increase the this distance ds. So you can do that by increasing the radius because ds is proportional to r. So you increase the radius of the conductor and you'll increase ds. The other thing we did in standard conductors, we introduced strands, right? So you increase the number of conductors in there. We're going to do sim something similar in a three phase system. So each phase, instead of having just one conductor, will now have a bundle of conductors. So instead of having just one conductor, let's say phase A, let me draw the conductors in green and let me draw this, um, what we call the spacers in, um, in a different color. So instead of having, so let's say these are these two conductors and they have this spacer in between. So this total formation is just carrying current for phase A. So if you have a transmission line, it could look something like, so let's say this is your transmission line. And then you'd have three spacers here. Let me change the color again.
and these are your conductors so this a these are your conductors so this is phase a phase b phase c these are what are called spacers and this is what you call a tube conductor bundle right so similarly you can have a three conductor bundle so you would have three conductors or you could have four conductors and I'll just draw the spacers out for these in a bit so you could have that those are your spacers they will all be equidistant so the distance between these two here for example is D the distance between these three could be D and again these will all be the same distance between them and we'll see how they decrease the um, inductance because they will increase this value ds they become similar to what we had gmr formulation here right we will use this formulation to calculate ds so this is this kind of configuration of bundle conductors is used specifically in um, extra high voltage um, lines, uh, which is something like 230 kV and above. So you have 230 kV, 400 kV, 500 kV, depending on um, which country you're in and uh, the uh, voltage that the utility uses uh, in, in that area. But at voltages at that level, we use these bundle conductors because one effect they have is they decrease uh, so bundled conductors bundled conductors they one decrease the inductance and they also help with the corona effect which is very prevalent uh, in these at these voltages so these are used specifically in uh, extra high voltages 230 kV and above uh, we won't go into this because that's really not the topic of our discussion the corona effect uh, here uh, what we'll do is we'll get the formulation for the inductance uh, before we do that though rather than the formulation of the inductance what I really want to leave you with today is the formulation for this ds because that's what's used here in this inductance value and we'll see how uh, how it's implemented in a practical case uh, using an example in the next video so i'm going to use this formulation gmr so for a two uh, let's start with the two bundle conductor right so i'm going to kind of keep this formulation here for you to see so if you imagine this two bundle conductor what will the ds be so we'll say ds and we will add a superscript of 2b to say it's a two bundle and if you use this formulation what's n here n is 2 1 and 2 right so then d of kn so that'll be d of 1 2 d of sorry k and then n is 1 so d of 1 1 d of 1 2 d of 2 1 and then d of 2 2 and this to the root of 2 square so that's 4 now what we know is d of 1 1 is equal to d of 2 2 is equal to r prime or ds okay and d of 1 2 is equal to d of 2 1 d of 1 2 is equal to d of 2 1 is equal to small d this distance small d right i hope you understand that okay so let, let me let me do this again here so this is your conductor one this is your conductor two the distance these are two conductors of the same bundle okay the distance between them is d 
they are of the same radius r so then you have all these things valid r prime is equal to ds is equal to 0.7788 r the distance between these two is d i hope you clearly understand this but to have understood this you really need to have seen the videos earlier which I hope you have if you haven't I'd encourage you to please go back and see the videos where we formulated GMD GMR and concepts such as those because that will make your understanding very clear on this so DS here is the distance between this uh, we, we use that formulation that I have for GMR that I showed you above right that's a product of so K is 1 N is 1 D 1 1 k is 1, n is 2, d 1, 2, k now goes to 2, n goes back to 1, d 2, 1, k is still 2, and n goes to 2, d 2, 2, n is total 2, n square becomes 4. So that's what you get, right? If we substitute all of this in here, then we get d s to b is equal to d s square times d square to the root fourth root which should give us nothing but ds times d and square root of that okay so i'm going to sum that up here is equal to square root of ds times d and this is what i wanted to formulate today this is the values for bundle conductors that you'll use in this equation, but ds will now be substituted by ds to b. Similarly, for we'll have a three bundle conductor would we'll get the value is equal to ds times d square to the power cube root of that and for four bundles we would have 4b is equal to 1.09 times ds d cube to the power 4. I want you to try and use this formulation and derive these equations. If you can't let me know and uh, I'll, I'll solve them out for you but it's relatively straightforward once you plug in all the values, this is 1, 2, and 3. The distance is 3 times d11, d22, d33. So that's ds cube. Then you have the distance from here to here, from here to here, and um, similarly for the other two conductors. And they're all equidistant. So you should get something like this. Same thing for a four um, conductor bundle. And these are the formulas you should get. If you have any problems deriving them, but I'm really going to encourage you to go back and derive them. Don't just take my word for it. Derive them. You will understand them better. You should get these values. And then what happens is for a three phase line, we can generalize our equation. So we generalize from the symmetrical to the unsymmetrical where we got D equivalent. We can generalize it further to say, L is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of D equivalent over ds b, and that could be the 2b, 3b, or 4b. And this is in, as always, Henry's per meter. And this is your average, average inductance per phase. So we're going to use this formulation. Uh, I'll solve an example in the next video. Uh, it'll be a practical case. Um, we'll uh, What we'll do is we'll not just find out the inductance, we'll find out the inductive reactance and um, you'll see what difference the bundling makes. Uh, I'll, I'll solve a case where we don't bundle it and then we have a bundle conductor and, and you'll see how the inductance and therefore the inductive reactance uh, gets affected by that. And uh, I leave you with a sample problem at the end of uh, our example next video as well. So um, once again, I really encourage you to solve this, to derive these rather. Uh, if you have a problem, uh, send me an email, nimish at movingelectrons.com and I'll respond or uh, leave, uh, leave
leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, uh, hopefully uh, see you in the next video till then take care bye now